Your stadium, Interleague Baseball on MLB The Show. It's the New York Yankees taking on the Los Angeles Dodgers. John Shambi alongside Chris Singleton. Singy, one of the stories in this one is a highly anticipated Major League debut, and all eyes will be on him as he gets the start in the mound. I love watching pitching debuts at this level because there's no waiting around to see the rookie in action. You get thrown right into the deep end of the major league pool. He's center stage from the first inning on. So, like you said, Boog, there's no hiding at all. There's a ton of excitement about this kid's future, and he's about to face the best lineup of his life. So I'm excited to see how he attacks it. Ready to go here and stepping in for the Yankees, for the Yankees, Harrison Bader. The center fielder, Harrison Bader. The pitch. In for a strike. And we're underway on Luke Garrick Day in Major League Baseball. First pitch, 7 10. The next pitch misses, and now it's even one and one. Ground ball to the right side, and he picks it up in foul territory. Today in Major League Baseball, we honor one of the greatest players in the history of the game, Lou Gehrig. It started in 2021, and today throughout Major League Baseball, we raise awareness for ALS, the disease that claimed the life of the great iron horse, Lou Gehrig. High chopper to third. Two down. That one just misses. When you think about the impact of Lou Gehrig on the world of sports, consider this. His number four was retired after he passed from ALS. It is the first number ever to be retired in all of professional sports. So effectively, the reason we have retired numbers is due to the fact that Lou Gehrig passed from ALS. And that's the first strikeout of his major league career. And it could be the first of many if he meets the goals he set for himself and the expectations others have for him. He doesn't want to just win games. He wants to dominate at this level. Do you think young pitchers could sometimes get too caught up in trying to rack up K's early in their career? Boog, I think they can. It's kind of like a hitter that doesn't have power. The thrill is still hitting a ball over the fence. And so for a guy, even if he doesn't have power stuff or strikeout stuff, a strikeout is still something that makes him stick his chest out a little bit further. Hit hard. That gets through. Well, that'll make you feel good as a hitter right there. Just a simple ground ball the other way that had eyes on it, man. Sometimes that's all you need to do. Just let the ball travel, put the ball in play, and just hope it finds a hole. Anthony Rizzo steps to the plate. Right now third in the American League in RBIs. Miller checks on first, and Judge back in safely. Personally, Lou Gehrig Day means a ton to me. I lost a close friend to ALS in 2007, Tim Sheehy. And you're talking about a disease that is 100% fatal, and the average lifespan for people diagnosed with ALS is just between two and five years. Judge over at first with one away. Pickoff throw, backstanding. He's in there safely. One of the other important pieces as far as raising awareness for ALS is that it is necessary to raise money, not just for research. First offering, runner goes. Pitch misses, throw, save. Well, a nice lead and a nice steal there to get into scoring position with the heart of the order at the plate. That might just lead them to pitching around these hitters a little more because of the open base, but it's early in this ball game. Can't imagine it'll change the attack plan too much. Falling behind two and one.
This is off the plate, and the count is three and one. Good pitchers make pitches in big situations, and right here with a middle of the order hitter up, runner in scoring position, he's got to find a way to throw a quality strike. And now it's filled up. He can live up in the zone all game if guys will chase it. That's just too much velocity. Hitter's got to look down in the zone. And a swing and a miss. That's out number two. Well, that split caught a lot of the zone. Definitely a hittable pitch, but coming off the fastball the pitch before, it's kind of tough to recognize. You notice there's something different about it. He threw it with the same arm action, same release point, and he left it up. But the movement and the change of speeds, that was enough to do the job. Here is Glaber Torres. Look at a rebound from Wednesday's game where he was 0 for 5. Towards first, Freeman. He takes it himself to the bag, and that'll do it. One hit, one left. And now the Dodgers get a crack at it. No score. Yeah. Welcome back. And today's starter, Clark Schmidt. What do we have on him? Yeah, he gave up several earned runs his last time out. I think command is a huge issue for him, and fastball command. He's got to trust it. He's got good velocity. Attack hitters with it in this one. Bottom of the first, here's Mookie Betts. He's a guy who does it all with the lack of contact in today's game. This guy hits for contact, so he delivers average, but there's on-base and slugging, too. That clips the zone. Strike one. Early in the count, you have to be real careful because of that power. But then if this hitter gets a strike or two on him, he's still very comfortable. And because he has the ability to get the barrel to the baseball, he's a threat deep into the count as well. Oh, and two now. Swings through it, and that's a strikeout. No need to deviate from the slider right there. The hitter just not making the adjustment. He came at him with the breaking ball, pitch after pitch, and that at bat, and evidently there was no answer for it. Freddie Freeman up to the dish. A little bit high. One ball, one strike. And he deals. That's off the mark. Two and one. And the slider just misses. First pitch strike from the pitcher, but then no panic at all by the hitter. Very patient, showing good discipline. Now he's in the driver's seat with the 3-1 count. Next offering finds the zone, and the count is full. 3-1 count, saying to himself, I've got to get a fastball here. Just spins a get-me-over breaking ball to bring the count full. Over to first. Yep, here tonight, down. an efficient start to the home first, two away. Here's the Dodgers lineup now. They do a lot of things well in this offense, Zingy. They control the strike zone. They make pitchers work hard for outs. And as a result, one of the better OBP teams in the league. Well, what I love about it is it's an organizational philosophy. Whether you go to instructional league, whether you go to spring training, you see these guys, even during batting practice, when it doesn't matter, they're practicing that type of approach, Boog. And when you have that filtering through the organization, even when you call up a player, he steps right in and continues with the pattern that they have established at this level, which ultimately leads to a lot of success. Next That's pitch is in the dirt. Two and oh. You know, you translate on base percentage. It's basically this. Teams that have a high on base percentage, they don't make outs at a very high rate. As my buddy Joe Sheehan says, OBP is life. Fastball, and he gets out of the way.
The 3 2 uh -oh. is off the outside edge, and that is ball four. His ability to draw walks has been that something cool. that's been part of his career since day yeah. one. Here comes Max Muncy. First pitch just misses. Smith off of first with two away. Swings through that one for strike two. That misses. Two balls, two strikes. And a swing and a miss. And that's that. On to the second now from Dodger Stadium. No score. Back here at the ballpark, DJ LeMay Hugh to start it off. Obviously a guy who makes good contact, hits for average, but one of the things in today's game, the value in the fact that he hits both righties and lefties. He swings and misses at the first pitch. 0-1. They're so reliant on the matchups nowadays, Chris, and it's huge when you don't have to sit a guy or platoon him. When you can hit you know, both sides in terms of pitcher's arms, you're a guy that it's hard to take out of the lineup, and I think it's very important today when everything is under the microscope. Next pitch is inside, and a count two and one. And a strike on the outside edge. Next pitch is outside. Three and two. Righty delivers. Swing and a miss struck him out. He had him out in front, which isn't easy to do against a hitter like this, known for using the entire field. Just couldn't sit back long enough on that one. Willie Calhoun stands in here. One for three back on Wednesday. In there, and it's 0-1. One down, base is empty. Now fly ball to right center. Outman sizes this one up, makes a nice running catch. Two down. That is that. The left fielder. Oswaldo Digging in is the switch hitting Cabrera. outfielder, Oswaldo Cabrera. Check swing went one around. One, one, one. And that one, one almost got him. This one high in the air to left center. And that should be extra bases. Makes the turn and heads for second. And that's a two-bagger. Well, the last 10 games or so have been anything but fun at the play for him. So that one has to feel good. Just a cookie down the middle. I mean, those are the ones you dream about. The ones in the cage, you're just hoping you get in the ball game. Right down the middle, not a whole lot of velocity right on top of it. Runner in scoring position now and a good opportunity to push across the first run of the ball game. Man at second here with two away. Here's the power hitting catcher, Kyle Higashioka. Pitch misses oh. inside. 1-0. and oh. Well, they're looking to get on the board first here after that clutch two-out double made this inning interesting.
the pitch. Higashioka tries to hold up, appeal to first, and James Kingsley says he won a round. Good eye right there. Last couple of pitches, breaking balls away. I think he's going to have to come firm inside to be able to open up that location if he wants to go back there later in this count. Next pitch is outside. Anthony Volpe waits on deck. Okay. And now it's filled up. Rudder at second, two down. To the right side. He handles it himself. Out number three. So one hit is all they get. We go to the bottom of inning number two. We're tied. Nothing, nothing. Bottom of the second. Here come the Dodgers. No score. And now here's the Dodgers designated hitter, J.D. Martinez. Martinez. Chris, that 2018 Red Sox team that won it all, J.D. Martinez was a vital cog in that offensive machine. Of course, Mookie Betts on that team as well, but Martinez no, led the ball. majors with 130 runs batted in. He was outstanding. The wind and the pitch. And there's the strike. Yeah, and he was the guy that other players fed off of. I mean, his level of intensity and focus and preparation, paying attention to video, batting practice video, going back in afterwards. His teammates fed off of it, and I think that's what elevated the offense. Next offering is downstairs. And that's ripped into left, base hit. Off to a good start with a leadoff nine. Well, when you fall behind in the count, you've got to come into the zone, and then guys have a better chance of hitting the ball hard like you did right there. David Peralta at the play. First pitch, and that's in for a strike. Martinez gets his lead at first. Nobody out. Next one is off the plate. And that is ball one. Larry Bullard making the calls behind the plate for us in this one. Pretty good strike zone. Well reviewed by those we talked to around the league. Yeah, he's an umpire. He doesn't get a lot of looks from players. Maybe here and there once in a while. But he's appreciated back there. That misses, and that's ball two. How much were you aware of the umpire scouting report, or even who was going to be umpiring? Not a whole lot. I mean, there were a couple of umpires that weren't real good, but outside of that, you just kind of went into the game, especially back when I was playing. Swing and a miss. The velocity blasted it right past him. Bell Boog, it becomes pretty difficult as a teammate when a guy's struggling like this. You don't know if you want to go up and tell him to keep swinging it or if you want to give him his space, what exactly he needs. But right now, it's clearly a struggle for him, and you're just hoping that somehow, some way, it'll click and he can get out of this as quickly as possible. Miguel Vargas steps to the plate for the Dodgers. Breaking ball inside, and that's ball one. The pitch. Nope, that's the way. No score here in the second.
that one down the line and that's just foul. Not even close there and the counts full. Interesting. He's looking very comfortable out of the stretch after giving up the leadoff single. Back-to-back -back strikeouts, so they haven't been able to move that runner up, get him in the scoring position, and try to have a better chance of scoring. I tell you, good job so far on the mound. He just needs one more out. James Outman steps to the plate for the Dodgers. That one's in there, 0-1. And a pitch. That oh, one is upstairs. Five. The one one. And now the count one and one two ball. after the swing and the miss. Swing and it's a flare down the right field line. And it goes just foul. And a one-two again. Swing and a miss. And that is that. So no runs here on a base hit. No errors. And one left. We play two full. We're tied. Nothing, nothing. Back here at Dodger Stadium. And the batter will be the shortstop. Anthony Volpe. Anthony Volpe. Volpe, just 21 years old. He's knocked in nine over his last 10 games. There's a strike. Ball one there. One and one. The wide to kick the pitch. Way outside. Now two balls and a strike. And here it comes. Swing and a miss, and that's strike two. Chases that one out of the zone, and one gone. Guys doubled up with the slider for that punch out. The one before just caught the zone, so as a hitter, you have to protect right there. Great pitch to just expand a little bit more. He got that chase he was looking for. That right there is good pitching. And now Bader up to the plate. That misses the zone, and it's 1-0. Bader, in his sixth season, hitting leadoff in today's game. And he's a former National League Gold Glover. Top of the third, no score. And he bunts, but that's a foul ball. They say it went. One and two. Yeah, the one two oh, misses ball. to even the count. It's a good take. Not three close ball. with that one. Right. And now it's three and two. Twings and misses. It's a strikeout. Gassed it right by him. And Chris, that's a way to neutralize his speed by keeping him off base. And the defense breathes a sigh of relief because he puts pressure on everyone if he can put the ball in play. But that's how you do it. Keep him off balance, get him out of there, and deal with the next guy. Judge at the plate for the second time as he takes ball one.
And that's off the inside edge. And the count is 2-0. The pitch. That one spoiled, and the count now two and one. Look out. That ball was smoked. Man, I am so relieved that they have this netting down the lines. Just ensure safety for the fans. Last thing as a player, you want to look up and see a fan get hit. Two two. Judge rips that one. Makes the grab, and that's the inning. Nothing doing here this half. We move on to the bottom of inning number three. We're tied. Nothing, nothing. As we go to the last of the third. And at the plate for the Dodgers, Miguel Rojas. Rojas measures six feet even, 190 pounds, and they traded for him earlier this year. First pitch doesn't find the zone. And he pumps it a strike. Kicks and fires. Swing and a miss. Slider right there. Wow, no fair right there. I mean, that slider didn't move to the very last moment. Incredibly difficult to pick that up. Just kind of have to tip your cap on that pitch. Throw is low, and he can't pick it. Back to the top of the lineup, and now it's Mookie Betts. Struck out on just three pitches last time. Singy, you can't ask for anything more. This guy checks all the boxes offensively. He's the ultimate professional, and it doesn't just start at game time. It starts in the afternoon the way he prepares and gets ready for the ball game. I tell you what, his teammates feed off of the leadership that he shows on and off the field. Rudder at first with no outs here. Next offering is in for a strike. And that one fouled off. With two strikes. May see some movement over there at first base. Try to stay out of a double play here. Right-hander kicks deals. And that one is lifted in the air. One away. The first baseman, number five, Freddie Freeman. Here comes Freddie Freeman up to hit. He's on the verge of a milestone. His next home run will be the 300th of his career. Check on the runner, and he dives back in safely. Base hit. First pitch swing in, went up there with the plan to be aggressive. First pitch fastball in a great spot to do some damage, and he squared it up nicely. The batter now will be Will Smith. He reached out a walk his first time. in there for strike one the last thing he wants is to hit the ball on the ground but I wouldn't expect many pitches up in the zone they'll be pitching for a double play in this spot you'll one and a foul ball well, he knows they don't want to give him anything to hit. But when you've got opportunities to drive in runs, you've got to expand the zone. He's capable of going out there and doing damage with it. And he'll two. One and two.
Grounder might be two. There's one. On to Rizzo at first, and they get the double play. They made it look easy, but it started with a nice feed to the second baseman from the shortstop. Perfect turn, and they're out of this jam. Back here in L.A., and here's the first baseman, the first baseman. Anthony Rizzo. Anthony Rizzo. And a pitch. And ball one. With Anthony Rizzo, you almost forget he was originally drafted by the Red Sox. He debuted with the Padres, won that championship with the Cubs, and now a Yankee. Yeah, and I think one of the telltale signs early with him in terms of the guy that would have that intestinal fortitude is just the fact that he beat cancer. In there at the knees. And the count, one and two. Generally, second, third time through the lineup, you want to be able to lean on those secondary pitches and command them. Looks like he's doing a nice job of it. One, two now. Battling here as he fouls it away. Left hand batter waits. Pitch misses. Two balls, two strikes. He wanted that fastball high and tight, looking for a strikeout. Just didn't locate it very well. Next offering upstairs. Really good take, especially with two strikes. Left hand hitter waits. Foul ball, and it remains a full count. Pretty good pitch there to take a rip at. He wants to get his arms extended. He likes the ball away from him a little bit, just not able to square it up. Kicks and deals. It's a leadoff walk, and that's the go-ahead run. That could jumpstart an offense that's really struggled to score in this one. Don't want to wake a team up with the free pass. Here comes Glaber Torres. Grounded out his first time. Runner takes off. Swing and a miss. Throw to second. Tag. And they got him. Such a quick and fast swing of emotions right there. You get the runner on with the walk, which is great, but then picks a bad pitch to go on, and you just erase the free pass that you were issued. I understand you want to be aggressive. You want to try to get in the scoring position, but you just have to be a little smarter there. You won. That one fouled off. That misses the zone. Now one and two. I don't think he was trying to miss by that much in an 0 2 count. Just tried to overthrow that pitch. And it's even up. Here comes a pitch. Next offering is outside. Still just the second batter of the inning, and on the mound, he's already thrown 13 pitches. They've got him working hard out there. Got him swinging. Well, one of the things that hitters will do is they'll look for that red dot on the baseball that's is coming in to let them know what the pitch is and if they see the red dot it's typically a slider but when a guy's got a really tight one with high spin rates very difficult to determine and that's probably why we saw a swing and miss right there just a nasty pitch up to the plate steps DJ LeMayhew the wind of the pitch Dangerous spot for that slider right there. Didn't seem to quite finish out front and get that sharp break. Tell you what, he doesn't want to throw that pitch again. Check swing. He went one and two. And yeah, that's outside. Swing and a ground ball up the middle. That's a base hit. Now 
batter, the designated hitter, Willie Calhoun. So, man aboard, and next is the designated hitter, Willie Calhoun. Good oh. eye right there. LeMayhew off of first with two away. Next one misses, and now 2-0. Oh. Oh, he's really working him away, this at bat. Sometimes take a little bit off velocity. Try to get a rollover, something on the ground. Stay away from that big hole on the right side of the infield. And the pitch. Misses Fair with not. the 2-0, and he's fired three straight outside the strike zone. Oswaldo Cabrera waiting for a turn at the plate. Three zero down. Hey. And that one clips the corner. Three two, two out. Runner on first. A lot of movement in the infield. Hitters got to stay focused on the pitch. Hacks and misses. It's a strikeout. The Yanks lead one. Still no score. Back here at Chavez Ravine, John Chavi and Chris Singleton with you. And leading off the bottom of the fourth, Max Muncy. Schmidt back to work. That one misses. Ball. Okay. ball one. Yeah, that oh. skips in the dirt. Two balls. No strike. Yeah, the right hander deals. Swing and a miss as he was late. Spin rate's outstanding on that high fastball. Really tough to hit. And another oh, ball. Definitely a swing and miss slider down and in. He finished that really well. Just couldn't get him to offer at it. 3-1 now. That's a strike across the top of the zone. And there's ball four. I don't think he really wanted to pitch to him right there anyhow. Chris, when you look at the launch angle revolution, J.D. Martinez might be one of the first guys you'd come up with. Remember, he was released by the Astros in March of 2014. The Tigers signed him, sent him to AAA. He raked down there. And then once he was called up by Detroit, since then, he's been one of the top hitters in baseball. The 1-0. And a foul ball. Next offering is in for a strike. It's just been an impressive outing so far. Continues to pound the zone pitch after pitch. And he's been able to stay down. That's what's been key. Swings and misses, struck him out. Well, that's always the key to effective pitching is getting ahead in the count. And as a pitcher, it really allows you to start expanding the zone. Guys become defensive, and all of a sudden, for the hitter, that plate starts to get really wide. And what happens is, because of the pressure, you end up committing to a pitch as a batter before you recognize what it is, and that's what leads to the strikeout. Peralta takes a ball as he stands in for the second time. And the righty deals. There's a strike. <laughs> the 
the pitch. That one drifts inside. Popped up. Rizzo hauls it in, and there's two away. Now the second baseman, Miguel. Now it's the second baseman, Miguel Vargas. There's a strike. The 0-1. Swing and a base hit. They stopped the lead runner at second. Now two on with two outs. The center fielder, number 33. Yay. So first and second with two outs. And up next for Los Angeles, James Outman. 0 for 1. He struck out swinging last time. And first offering is fouled off. At the belt and fires. Outside. Muncy, the lead runner at second. Vargas on at first with two down. Next offering way off the plate. And he deals. And a foul ball. He stays alive. The 2-2 two -two on the way. Liner to second. It picked on the hop. Oh. Out with room to spare. And that's the inning. Two left on. We played four. We're tied. Nothing, nothing. Welcome back. We go to the top of the fifth. Now it's the switch hitting outfielder, Oswaldo Cabrera. Now the right hander ready to go. Still no score. Know. That one ran inside, almost got him. You know, these Yankees doing a great job, Boog, of just waiting for the right pitch to come their way, and I'm seeing very patient at bats out of them. They haven't produced a run yet, but the pitch count for the starter is starting to climb, so they're hoping that starts to pay off soon. And now two and one. And I think they're in a good spot thanks to their pitching, but no one would be shocked if this offense strings something together to take the lead. Next pitch has popped up. Freeman hauls it in, and there's one away. Now batting, catcher, Kyle Higashioka. And here is Kyle Higashioka. 0 for 1, he grounded out in his first at bat. Ball one, no, no strikes. One ball, no strikes. They tried to get him to chase on a slider down and away. And a pitch. And there's a the ball. Looks like he's still trying to find a consistent release point in that curveball. That one just sort of popped out of his hand. No real command and finish to it. It's going to be real important for him to finish that pitch, throw it down in the zone where he wants to. Thank you, and it's going to be effective for him throughout this game. And a four-pitch walk. Definitely lost the handle during that yeah, sequence. Four right. pitches for the walk. Yeah. And that last one yeah. didn't even threaten oh, the zone. Yeah. Catcher might want to go talk to him. Runner on at first with one gone. Now it's the shortstop, Anthony Volpe. There goes the runner. 
And first offering is fouled off. Righty delivers. That one's in there. No balls, two strikes. And a pitch. Cuts and misses. It's a strikeout. Wow, just great bite to that slider. Broke hard out of the zone, and he just couldn't hold up the swing. You know, as a hitter, that pitch is really hard to take, and there's just not much you can do with it. You know that, but you don't want to get rung up by the umpire. Harrison Bader stepping in now for the Yankees. And first offering is fouled off. Comes up empty. That's strike two. That one out to right. Dives, but it falls. And now it looks like extra bases. Higashioka rounds third, headed for the plate. One run is in, and he'll pull into third with an RBI triple. Well, here we are, third time through the order, and this is where we see the OPS jump up. Manager might have to go to the bullpen a little bit sooner than he anticipated. And now big number 99, Aaron Judge, one for two. First offering misses the mark. Chris Judge has been an exit velocity monster, leading the league in exit velo in 17, 18, 19, 21, and 2022. Yeah, he makes that hot corner at third base. <laughs> that misses the zone, and yeah, that's ball two. Activity in the bullpen for the Dodgers. Justin Brule looks to be getting ready for manager Dave Roberts. Almonte, the right-hander, also getting loose. Rip to short. Rojas with the throw to first. Judge out of the play. And that is that. But they do get on the board in the inning on this run scoring triple. It's now a 1 0 ball game. Major League Baseball is on the show. Ready to go for the last half of the inning. And at the plate for the Dodgers, Miguel Rojas. All these fans definitely want to get involved in the game. All it's going to take is to get the leadoff man or even a base runner on. Right down to shoot. That's strike one. He's pitching well, but not throwing a ton of first pitch strikes. He usually doesn't work out for success, but you can never predict baseball. Right-hander kicks, deals. That one in there across the letters. Pretty impressive. We haven't seen that pitch from him much, but he's got a really good feel when he throws it. Next offering is down low, and it's one and two. Excellent arm action on that two-strike changeup. Just missed. Man, he wanted that call. The one-two. And a base hit. And that turns the lineup over. So the batting order turns over. Here's a big power threat. Mookie Betts. And first offering is fouled off. And here it comes. Misses off the inside, and it's a ball and a strike. Oh. 
right into the play. And a count one and two. The pitch. And now the count is even. Man, oh man, I don't know how you take that pitch. That's as close as it gets. Kicks and deals. Swings through it, and that's a strikeout. Here comes the skipper, and we're going to see a pitching change in this spot. Clark Schmidt is done, and we'll be back with their first arm out of the pen after a quick break. A new pitcher in the game, Ryan Weber. Well, he hasn't pitched in a while. Coming on here after five days rest, so he should be rested. But we'll see if he has any rust to shake off. Freddie Freeman steps to the plate for the Dodgers. Good swing out of him last time. Ripped a liner in the center. The kick in the pitch. Runner goes. And first offering is fouled off. Rojas leads off first with one away. Ground ball left side could be two. Over to Torres. And that's quick work out of the pen. One batter, two outs, inning over. Poultry in motion there as the second baseman turns the double play. Nice throw to first, and that's the way to end the inning. We're back, and they make a change to start the sixth. The new pitcher, Yenzi Almonte. 25th appearance of the year for him. Well, one run game, and stepping in for the Yankees, Anthony Rizzo. And a pitch. And that one pulled foul. Here comes the 0 1. And there's a strike. Meanwhile, activity in the bullpen. Phil Bickford getting ready to go. Right-handed reliever. Recognize that changeup right out of the hand. Just spit on it. The pitch. And now it's even up. Well, this is a guy that can be frustrating for pitchers because he fouls off so many pitches and grinds out the at-bat. I'm sure there's some times where a pitcher would rather just give up a first-pitch single than have to waste six or seven pitches on one hitter. Three balls. Two strikes. And the right-hander deals. Got him. And he's down on strikes for the second time today. Well, big power guy right there and generating so much bat speed. It's hard to bring that to a halt once you've committed. They tried to check the swing, just couldn't do it. Glaber Torres up to hit. Struggling on the road this season. Better results at home. Torres, a guy the Yankees acquired for Aroldis Chapman back in 2016. He is fearless. You can't tell if he's been in this league for eight years or two years. Nice. Next offering is in for a strike. Down the left field line, base hit. Now 
batter. Third baseman. And now it's DJ LeMayhew digging LeMay. in. Thriving here at Yankee Stadium. Of course, a very good hitter's park. He's going. He's Runner going. on the goal. Foul ball there. One run game, one out, one on. Here's the pitch. Runner goes again. It's a pitch out. The throw, tag, and he's out. Well, I really didn't expect him to try to steal second base because he had a very standard lead at best. If you're going to try to get there safely, you've got to get more on that lead. You've got to get a better jump. That was the difference between being safe and out. One one, and there's a foul ball. The pitch, foul ball, still a one and two count. Got him swinging. One hit in the inning, but no one left. Heart of the order, 3-4-5 coming up. Yankees won, and the Dodgers nothing. Back here at the ballpark, and up to the plate is Will Smith. Chris, baseball today, so many strikeouts, and they are available to pitchers. But this is a guy that puts the bat on the ball and is kind of different from the players that we see day in, day out. In there at the knees, and it's 0-1. And The 0-2. And that just misses. Activity in the bullpen. Clay Holmes getting loose out there. But why to kick the pitch? Chopped in the ground. And they get the out on Smith. The third baseman, number 13, Matt. Max Muncy at the dish. He's 0 for 1. First offering in the dirt. Muncy, a former All Star, 32 years old, and he was a fifth round pick back in 2012. Next offering is foul back. The pitch. On the ground to third. Throw on to Rizzo. Two up, two down. Now back. The deputy. And here is JD Martinez. Martinez, a member of the 1000 Hit Club, and he was selected to the All Star game last year. First pitch is in the dirt. Both you and I know how much attention to detail that J.D. Martinez pays. Kind of makes me think of Albert Pujols, who has been called the machine at times during his career. I'd venture to say you could put J.D. Martinez in that same category, at least the way he approaches his craft. That's inside. For J.D. Martinez, his teammate, when they won it all in 2018, Ian Kinsler called him the mad scientist so maybe the machine and the mad scientist David Peralta up next for the Dodgers I don't believe until JD Martinez arrived in Boston 
they didn't videotape their batting practices and something we're seeing more and more teams do now so that guys can have instant feedback before the game starts. Kicks and fires. And he walked him. One of the things about that two-out walk, the base runner over at first base is going to have a very aggressive secondary lead. So a ball down the line or into the gap will produce a two-out RBI, and those are the best. That is if you are the offensive side of it. That one in the dirt, and that's ball one. Go with the tie and run at first base. He's looking for something he can get a lot of barrel on, drive it into a gap, and score that run from first base. Two outs. Swings through that one for strike one. Martinez leads off first with two down to the inning. So a foul ball makes it one and two. Hit on the ground to the right side. And foul ball. The one two on the ground right side whips it to first and that's the inning nothing across on no hits no errors and one left we're through six full Yankees one and the Dodgers nothing welcome back we're in the seventh we have a new pitcher on the mound Victor Gonzalez and this guy can